Hi guys, so today I want to work on some random pieces of furniture that I want to get ready for my booth at the antique mall. Right now it's almost empty and I definitely need to get some new pieces in there. And I dug out these chairs from our workshop and as you can see they are very uh, dusty and dirty from, you know, we cut wood up there and of course things get dirty but it's easy to clean at least. And years ago I had actually painted them and added the little kind of gardening themed um, images on the back. I used the parchment paper method to do that. And I think they turned out pretty cute. I painted them four different colors. Um, I used to host garden parties here on our property years ago, so I would use some of these pieces for that. But I've always wanted to add a padded seat. I think that's what they still need. Initially they had chair pads on them and they were really gross looking if I remember correctly. But I think that's what they really need is just a little something to kind of pretty up the seats. At one point while I was still, you know, hosting the garden parties, I had about eight or ten of these metal folding chairs. I painted them light blue and added white uh, kind of gardening words on the backs. And over the years I've sold most of them since I didn't, you know, use them anymore. I dug these two out of my furniture stash also up in the shop. And I think what I'll do is repaint them. I don't have any light blue left over. I kind of like this color, but I don't want to go buy a can of paint if I have other colors available. And I do have some pretty green, so I may just end up painting them green. Uh, also maybe add words or something onto the backs and sell them as a set. I also have a few other pieces I want to work on today, but for now I'll start on these chairs. I don't always wear a respirator when painting, especially not with water-based paint, but if I use paint out of a spray can like this and I feel like I'm breathing more of it in, right now there's not much of a breeze going so I'll feel better with uh, wearing it. My next step here is removing the seats and then putting some foam on them, uh, covering them with a fabric, probably drop cloth. I think just a plain drop cloth fabric would look pretty on these chairs. I'm using foam from an old patio set. I've just hung on to the cushions uh, for cases like this where I need a piece of foam. So between a scissors and a knife that were both not very sharp, I managed to kind of wrestle with this foam until I had my shape cut out and also cut it in half. I didn't want the foam to be this thick.
the wood from these seats is so thin, so instead of relying on just screwing it in from the bottom of the chair, uh, risking to have the tip of the screw you know, come up through the seat, um, since people will be sitting on here, that would not be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these wood blocks on the bottom before I put the foam and the fabric on. That way I have something that I can get a hold of the seat with uh, when I put it on the chair frame. And this will make sense as I actually do it then. And just in case it varies from chair to chair, I'm gonna mark the bottom with the chair color that the seat belongs to. So getting back to the metal folding chairs, using my Silhouette Cameo, I cut out these grain sack stripes that I plan to paint on the backs and the seats of the chairs. The paint I'm using is just my usual Do It Best brand latex paint, and it's just a plain white color. I'm using a little spouncer from Walmart to apply the paint. I prefer this method versus brushing. I feel like sometimes when I brush you know, onto a stencil, I kind of brush the paint underneath the stencil, and this can happen with a spouncer too, but not quite as likely. As you can see, my green paint came off here in between the stripes. Later on, I was able to touch that up using a small paintbrush. So here is another piece I wanna work on today. Um, I don't even have to paint it. Someone had previously painted it and did a good job of it. So I think I'll just leave it uh, white. I may end up changing the knobs, I'm not quite sure. I feel like it needs a little bit of character, maybe add an image of some kind on the doors. 
And I haven't done my parchment paper method recently on my videos here, so I thought I'd do that today and show you guys an easy way, uh, you know, to add a little bit of character to a piece like this. When transferring an image using parchment paper, the first thing, of course, I do is cut out my parchment paper to eight and a half by 11 inches to fit my printer. I have found it works best for me to tape my parchment paper onto a piece of copy paper because of the tight curl that parchment paper has. Uh, it sometimes will jam up in your printer. And one thing to always keep in mind is your image needs to be in reverse for this method. And in this case, I downloaded the image already in reverse. I got it from the Graphics Fairy website, and I'll link it down below. Um, it's such an amazing website to go on to get all kinds of vintage, uh, French country, shabby chic type of designs. Here I'm just eyeing my design to make sure it's centered. Should probably measure, but I think I'll risk it. And you want to be careful once you have your design, you're ready to lay on your surface. You don't want to drag it around because the ink will smear. And any hard object like a marker end or a glue stick in this case uh, works quite well to you know, transfer the image, like rub it off of the parchment paper. I really like how these turned out. The last thing to do is give it a clear coat uh, just to protect it. Um, usually it might be okay without, but I've noticed uh, in the past, you know, if you maybe take too wet of a rag over a surface like this and it doesn't have a clear coat, it can take the ink off. In this case, I'm using a satin sheen clear coat. Um, I probably would prefer to go with matte because satin does have just a bit of a shine, but this was all I had on hand. Thank you. 
So on hindsight, I think the chairs, the ones with the foam seats, I would probably buy the foam already the correct uh, thickness, and I'd also invest in a tool of some kind to better you know, cut the shape out, because I did notice anywhere where there wasn't like a clean cut, it kind of showed up um, kind of uneven along the edges here and there. I tried to keep the price fairly reasonable on them. I feel like they'd make great little seats for maybe a porch. I didn't get a video of this, but all of the pieces ended up being put in the antique mall in Walnut Creek this morning. And the address is down below in the description box if you're ever in the area and want to stop in. Um, it's one of my favorite antique malls. Uh, I feel honored to be able to have a booth there. I gotta say, sometimes I'm kind of embarrassed to send people to my booth because I really have a hard time keeping it stocked. Um, I'm not complaining though, it's kind of a good problem to have, but at the same time I hate to talk about it and send people there and not have it filled. And I also feel bad about the owners of the antique mall. They're so good to work with and I'm using a space in their building and I do want to try better to, to keep it full. We do have some changes coming here in the near future that I think will kind of help me out on that end. So I'm not ready to give up on it at this point. I love it too much. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.